In this video, we're going to be doing a second example problem, which uses the idea of work and the work kinetic energy theorem. The work kinetic energy theorem says that the change in the kinetic energy of an object as it goes through some process is the total work done on that object by all forces acting on the object as the object goes through that process. To apply the work kinetic energy theorem to the problem at hand, we're going to be following the steps on this procedure handout. This is available in the module introduction. Here is the problem we're going to be working on. We have a mass which starts at a speed of zero at the top of an incline, and this mass is going to start sliding down the incline. As the mass is sliding down the incline, we have a rope attached to the mass, and then up here we have somebody pulling on the rope. So whoever is pulling on the rope here is trying to control the mass so that it does not slide down the incline. However, whoever this is just isn't strong enough, and the mass continues to slide down, getting faster and faster as it slides down the incline. So at the top of the incline, the speed of the mass is zero. At the bottom, we have a speed V final equals three meters per second. The distance that the mass slides down the incline is given by, well, here, this is the magnitude of the displacement equal to four meters. The mass is 150 kilograms. And given the final speed of the mass, when it gets to the bottom of the incline and this other information, we're going to try to find the tension that was maintained in the rope here as the mass was sliding down the incline. So let's go to the handout. The first step says to draw two pictures, one illustrating the initial situation and one illustrating the final situation. So we already have that over here. However, in order to develop the calculation, I'm going to do a clean figure over here so that we can highlight the forces acting on the mass. Okay, so I'm going to come over to here and again draw the mass in the initial situation. So then the mass goes through the displacement. So here's our displacement vector. And this would be the final position of the mass here. Okay, so that was step two, actually, to draw in the displacement vector. But now I'm going to go back and finish step one, which is to go to the initial situation and draw in all forces acting on the object of interest. So here we can do our usual free body diagram analysis. So I would encourage you to try this on your own before rejoining the video. So start by drawing the dashed line around the mass. Draw in the gravitational force vector first then go around the dashed line to see what other things are reaching in through the dashed line to touch the mass. And when you find those things, put in the corresponding force vectors. Okay, so I hope you've had a chance to try and draw the force diagram on your own. So now I'm going to do that. So I will come to the initial position of the mass and draw in the gravitational force pointing down. So we have gravitational force vector, magnitude mg. Okay, then going around the dashed line, here we see the rope reaching in through the dashed line to touch the mass. So the rope would exert a tension force. So I'm going to come into the figure here and put in that tension force. And I want to point out, as we see in the picture, the rope makes a 20 degree angle, not with the horizontal, but it makes a 20 degree angle with the direction of the incline. So if I extend that displacement vector into the backward direction here, this angle in here between that backward extension of the displacement vector and the tension vector, that would be 20 degrees in here. So we're gonna need that later. Now returning to the dashed line and continuing around the dashed line, we can also see that the incline itself is reaching in through the dashed line to touch the mass. Since we are given that this is a frictionless incline, 
the only force that the incline exerts on the mass would be a normal force. So I'm going to go into the figure and put in the normal force. So that was steps one and two together. Now we're going to go to step three. Separately compute the work done on the object of interest by each force acting. So in this problem, we're going to be looking for symbolic expressions for the work done by each of those force vectors. So I'm not going to be using any numerical values other than the angles and units of degrees until we get to the last step. So I'm going to be doing step three entirely in symbolic fashion. Okay, let's start by finding the work done by the gravitational force. So here I'm going to use the formula for work, just applying it to the gravitational force vector. So work done by the gravitational force would equal the magnitude of the gravitational force vector times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the gravitational force vector and the displacement vector. Now, what would that be? Here, maybe pause the video and see if you can figure out what that angle would be before rejoining the video. Right, so I'm going to come to the mass here and draw a horizontal direction just so that we can see the angles better. And I could draw in that same horizontal in the original figure. Now, what would be the angle between the horizontal here and the incline? Here, we're going to use alternate interior angles. If this is 30 degrees here, this would also be 30 degrees. And I can put in 30 degrees here as well. Okay, so from the horizontal here down to the gravitational force, that's 90 degrees. So if this is 30, this must be 60 in here. Okay, so I have a 60 degree angle between the gravitational force and the displacement vector. And now just to work on this expression a bit more, the magnitude of the gravitational force is m times little g. So now I have an expression for the work done by the gravitational force. Okay, now I go to the work done by tension. So work done by tension would be, right, using the formula again, magnitude of the tension force, magnitude of the displacement, and then the cosine of the angle between the tension force and the displacement of the mass. Here, this would be another opportunity to pause the video and see if you can work out that angle on your own. Okay, so notice that between the displacement vector and the direction opposite to the displacement vector, that entire thing there would be 180 degrees, right? So if this is 20 degrees, what do I have to add to 20 degrees in order to get 180? Well, that would be 160. So the work done by tension would be magnitude of tension, magnitude of displacement times cosine of 160 degrees. And I'm gonna make this look maybe a little nicer by just taking magnitude of tension force and writing it just as T4 tension. Okay, so now I have the work done by tension. The last force in here is the normal force. The work done by the normal force would be magnitude of normal force times magnitude of displacement, and then cosine. Now, what's the angle between the normal force and the displacement vector? Well, those two vectors are perpendicular. So this would be cosine 90, cosine 90 is zero. So the work done by the normal force is zero. So that was the third step on the handout. Now we're going to go to step four, which is to apply the work kinetic energy theorem. So I'm going to take the work kinetic energy theorem from here. I'm going to copy it onto a clean sheet and then we will wrap up the problem. So step four, we're going to apply the work kinetic energy theorem and I'm actually gonna switch sides relative to what's on the sheet. So I'm gonna put on the left, change in kinetic energy, which would be one half mv final squared, that's the final kinetic energy, minus the initial kinetic energy, one half mv initial squared. 
that's equal to the sum of all work done on the object by all forces acting. To evaluate this sum, I'm just going to take the expressions we got here, here, and here for the work done on the object by the three different forces acting. That gives me, okay, copying down the left side, And on the right side, I'm going to add these three terms together. So I have mg magnitude displacement cosine 60 plus magnitude tension, magnitude displacement, cosine 160. And we don't really need to show the addition of the zero. So let's just stop there. All right, now I'm trying to solve for tension. Now the Initial speed is zero, so that can go away. I'm going to rewrite this equation on a single line so we can see what's happening with the algebra a little cleaner. Uh, on the left here, I'm going to factor out the displacement. Okay, so now we want to algebraically isolate the tension. We're going to work symbolically until the last step and then substitute numerical values along with units. So let's start by just dividing through by the magnitude of the displacement. And then we're also going to take that mg cosine 60 and subtract it to the left side. So now I have one half mass the final squared over magnitude displacement. So that was first. Now subtract this onto the left. Whoops. So that would be equal to T cosine 160. So now to isolate the tension, just divide through by cosine 160 and then flip the sides. So I then have tension equals mv final squared over two times displacement minus mg cosine 60, all of that over cosine 160. I'm gonna do one more little algebraic step factoring out m. So I then have tension equals m over cosine 160. times the final squared over two magnitude displacement minus G cosine 60. Substituting now, the mass is 150 kilograms. Then V final was three meters per second. And squaring that, I divide by two times four meters. And then minus G, 9.8 meters per second squared times cosine 60. Now, when I put all of this into my calculator, I get a numerical value of 603, but let's check the units. So notice that. Both of the terms inside the bracket here have units of meters per second squared. So we are multiplying meters per second squared times kilogram. A kilogram times meters per second squared is a Newton, which is the unit we would expect for a force. So our answer is tension equals 603 Newtons. And now we have done our second example problem using the work kinetic energy theorem. In the next few videos, we will be taking the work kinetic energy theorem as our starting point. And from that starting point, we are going to develop a whole new way of thinking about motion.